As a young boy, I watched Brocky on TV and I was simply in awe. He was fast, confident, with one hand on the steering wheel, sliding the car sideways on top of the mountain. All this time with a Vegemite sandwich in the passenger seat. It was an image that led me to build my very own Tirana. It was my first muscle car. And today we explore in many ways what made the A9X LX Tirana so special. It's a car that in many ways has cemented itself into the greatest motorsport folklore. It is the greatest home-built touring car ever made in Australia. G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's a nostalgic Saturday here at Clooney Garage. I don't, not normally that dramatic in the intro there, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit of a bathos there. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the LXSS Tirana, the A9X edition, and what made it so special. There's a couple of reasons, we'll go through all that. And I've done a fair bit of research, been on the internet, looked at lots of facts and figures and stuff, and we've got some pretty cool photos and stuff to share with you as well. So have a look as I'm presenting at the moment. You'll see some different photos come up, but let's talk all about it. Let's get stuck into it. So let's start where it all began. And that was back in February 1976 when the LX model was introduced. It was a beautiful model and year, that uh, February 1976 edition. Same vintage as the young Fred here. And it, uh, it was the new model after the LH, powered by the mighty L34 back in those days, the V8 model. So she rolled off the production line in 76. And then towards in 1977, they started introducing this performance pack. So the A9X wasn't even a model in its own right. It was about that July 1977 from what I can read um, and research. And this performance pack, you know, this was actually part of the homologation that allowed them to race a Bathurst. So this Bathurst, you know, fighting edition came out as a two-door platformer in a hatchback as opposed to the four-door um, model in the LH Tirana. And that's when it all started. And you've got to remember back in those days, we were up against the big Falcon Coupes. And, you know, they were seriously capable muscle cars, a 351 powered, you know, 5.8 litre V8s. It's so a Holden had to do something, and that's what they did. So, Fred, tell us what makes them so special. All right, I'll let you know. First thing is the look. The look is muscle car. Big reverse cow scoop on the bonnet. Beautiful flared guards. I love the drop tanks on them. The drop tanks are amazing. And they just scream Bathurst touring car muscle, don't they really? I mean, I'm a little bit biased, of course, um, having built a replica myself. And uh, the, this thing, when it came out, it oozed. Win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Have a look at this photo. So such a contrast to the V8 supercars you see of today that bear no resemblance to the actual car you can go and buy. But in these days, in the 70s and even the early 80s, the car that you saw racing around Bathurst actually pretty closely resembled the car that you actually went and bought off the lot. I wish those days were still here. Right, the next reason they were so cool and so special was the performance package. This thing came out with a 5 litre 308. And this was up against the 351s as I've mentioned. This is pretty cool. It had roller rocker valve gear, um, you know, Rochester 4 barrel carb. In the Bathurst edition, obviously big side pipes on it. Um, actually came out with the L31 engine. Um, to contrary belief, you know, everyone says L34 was the A9X, it was the L31. They ran into some issues there in homologation. Um, but this car was still pretty cool. I think the Bathurst editions were up around that 200 kilowatts, and the car that you could go and buy off the lot, the A9X, was about 160, 170 kilowatts. So, you know, you go back in time, that's, that's pretty serious power you know, back in those days for a car that didn't weigh much. You've got to remember that these two-door shells... Well, we're pretty lightweight, so the advantage that the Tirana A9X had was power to weight over the big Falcon Coupes. The next things that made this car so special was that it had a really upgraded performance package when it comes to suspension and brakes. If you remember that little RTS, that radial tune suspension um, sort of glove box badge that you might see on, on certain older Holdens, LX Tirana was the first thing that actually came out with this. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of specs. I'll put it in the description. It's around sway bars and different bushes, different steering mounting geometry to the chassis. Um, 
transform the car, you know, and I think that went on to follow in um, subsequent Holdens as well. It actually came out with a Salisbury 10 bolt diff. Uh, I've got personal experience in blowing up the previous banjo model, so you, you don't want that, um, particularly at Braddon on a Friday night uh, back in the day. Um, and, you know, they had some other cool bits too, so disc brake rear end, uh, so made sure that this thing could actually stop. And the third reason why these things are so special, it's their track record. We will never see, and that's why my thumbnail is a homage to this untouchable notion here, we will never see someone in a car and a platform dominate as we saw with the A9Xs in 78 and 79. Rumour goes round that, well, Brock actually was running out of oil on that last lap um, that he did, but he actually got his fastest lap time. Um, in the race on the last lap uh, he was pretty special it was pretty cool and this thing here was it's etched in motorsport history and uh, it's a true icon of just total domination the top eight places were Tirana a9x's in that year we'll never see that repeated again and for you history buffs out there in 78 79 the A9X won the Australian Touring Car Championship as well, as well as the end of you know, the year Bathurst results with Brocky and Bob Morris, respectively. All right, so there's three pretty cool reasons what made them so special. You know, the looks, the power package, the performance, and the track record. And I think they're pretty cool. They're seriously getting unachievable for people like us to buy them these days and turn them into street cars. Um, although young Fred did do that. Um, and, you know, I've got some other photos that I'm flashing up here too. There are some amazing looking A9X replicas, uh, but I would just love to have a bit of a pipe dream, have one here in Clooney Garage, but I don't think I'll take it around Wakefield. Don't do it for Dale, do it for Rocky. Catch you later.